Okay, so now that we have an idea of how all of the physical infrastructure is connected and a little bit about how items of information, packets of information can travel through those networks and we're connected, we've got an IP address. Now we're ready to actually start answering the question, what happens at the moment that I press enter? I've typed www.google into my browser's URL bar and I hit enter. Okay, so one of the first big problems you might notice now is we did all this work to get an IP address so that other things could communicate with us, but www.google.com is not an IP address. So when we're over here typing on our PC or our laptop or our phone or whatever, and we say, hey, I wanna to go to www.google.com, the first thing our computer has to do is determine what IP address should be used for www.google.com. So we've invented a whole system to do this, DNS, the domain name system. And DNS is actually a complex hierarchy of services. So when our computer wants to answer the question, what IP address should I use for www.google.com? In the worst case scenario, which is what I'm gonna go through, we might talk to as many as four different servers in the process of answering this question, okay? So the first thing that's gonna happen is my web browser running on my machine has what's called a DNS cache, which is just a list of you know URLs that you've looked up somewhat recently mapped to their IP address. So worst case scenario, you don't have google.com in your DNS cache and your, your browser says, oh, nope, I don't know what that is, okay? Now, the next thing that's gonna happen is your operating system has a DNS cache. So our operating system is gonna check its DNS cache for www.google.com and see if anything is stored there. And the answer to that question in this case is also gonna be, nope, haven't looked that up recently enough. Maybe you just restarted your computer and the DNS cache is empty, okay? so. If there is no entry in a DNS cache on our local system for www.google.com, we are going to have to engage the first server that we're gonna communicate with. So remember, I'm gonna simplify. We've talked a little bit about all the different interconnected systems. We're gonna you know, send a message through the internet, right, knowing that we're gonna maybe hit some of Comcast infrastructure and some L3 infrastructure, and we're gonna to go to my router and my modem before we do any of that, but we're just gonna simplify all that and say, hey, we're gonna send a request to the internet to the first service. And this first service that we're gonna use is called a DNS resolver, all right? And its job is to resolve URLs into IP addresses. There are a number of options that you might be using for your DNS resolver. Google runs a popular DNS resolver at the IP address 8.8.8.8. .8 Cloudflare runs a popular DNS resolver at 1.1.1.1. And these you know, are intentionally very easy to remember IP addresses because you have to be able to access them without a URL. Right? These are the things that tell us what URLs map to what IP addresses, so we have to be able to tell our computer directly, hey, use 8.8.8.8 .8 or 1.1.1.1. And your ISPs will probably be running some DNS resolver that would have been set up for you, you know, when you called Comcast and said, hey, turn on my internet. So your modem would have a default DNS resolver you know, somewhere baked into it. You can look these up in your network settings. It doesn't really matter. For the purposes of this exercise, I'm gonna assume that we're using Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1 because I kind of like Cloudflare, they're a cool company. Okay, so I send a message to my DNS resolver and I'm gonna send a particular kind of message, a DNS query and a specific kind of DNS query. I'm trying to answer the question, what is an A record for google.com? And an A record just means 
I'm looking for the IP address. There are a few other kind of interesting, there's many kinds of DNS records, but some of the more popular ones are A and quadruple A, 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 A. This being for IPv6 address, this being for IPv4 address. Okay, there are NS, name server records, where an A record asks, what is the IP address for the URL that I'm querying? A name server record asks for, an NS record asks for, what is the authoritative name server associated with google.com? And so to figure out what that means, we have to go a little deeper. So let's say I send this A record to my DNS resolver, 1.1.1.1, and they don't have google.com in their cache. You know, this might not be realistic in most settings. Google.com is probably in the cache, but we're assuming the worst case scenario. So this is a brand new instance and 1.1.1.1 isn't in there. Then our DNS resolver will have to engage the other three components of the DNS hierarchy. Okay. This is a DNS root server top level domain DNS server and an authoritative DNS server, All right? So these three servers are all part of the DNS system, but they're operated by different entities and they have different responsibilities. Okay. So the root server's responsibility, and there's 13 of these. Last time I checked, there's 13 root servers worldwide. And that doesn't mean there's 13 you know, physical servers, but there's just 13 IP addresses that map to potentially replicated servers. But the root servers need to know about all of the TLD servers that exist. And TLD servers are for handling specific top level domains like com or gov or co.uk, right? Each of these is called a top level domain, com, gov, edu, org, and all of the specific country top level domains are managed by the TLD servers, okay? So it's the root server's responsibility to know about all of the different TLD servers that exist and each individual TLD server is responsible for knowing about all of the authoritative DNS servers within their top level domain. So the COM TLD server knows about all of the authoritative DNS servers for any URL ending with .com, okay? And these authoritative servers are operated, you know, by the people who actually own the URLs, so in our case, Google is going to be operating an authoritative DNS server that contains the actual mapping of Google.com to some IP address. Okay, now in the absolute worst case scenario, we're going to have to go through this process in several steps, and most of the time, this DNS resolver is either going to have an entry in the cache for google.com and send it back to us directly without engaging any of these servers, or it's going to know at least about the appropriate TLD or authoritative server to query. But just in the sake of being kind of complete and thorough, I'm going to assume that this DNS resolver doesn't know anything except what route it should be asking questions when it doesn't know anything. Okay. So, the first thing that happens is our resolver gets an A record for google.com. It doesn't know what to do with that. So it says, hey, root server, can you tell me where google.com is? It's going to send that A record for Google. And the root server is going to respond with a message that says, you know, no, I don't have that information. But you should ask, since you sent me a, qu a query for google.com, you should ask a com TLD. And since the root server's responsibility is to know the names and IP addresses of all of the com TLD servers, 
this response will include those names and those IP addresses. So the DNS resolver can then say, okay, well, thanks, you got me one step closer. I'll ask one of the TLD servers, a com TLD server, hey, do you know who's got, do you have the IP address for google.com? And the TLD server will again say, no. But since the TLD server's responsibility is to know about all the authoritative servers for any .com address, the TLD server will respond with a message that says, you can ask this authoritative server. And this authoritative server will be a server operated by Google at this point. And our DNS resolver will ask them, hey, do you have an A record for google.com? And the authoritative server will say, yes, I do. You should ask, you know, uh, let's just make up an IP address, 72.1.50.3. That's google.com's IP address. Okay, now after these three requests, finally, our DNS resolver can say, oh, hey, I got the answer to the question that you asked me. You should send a request to 72.1.50.3. Now, we can use this IP address in the next step to actually send a message directly to google.com. Now that we know their IP address, we'll be able to communicate with them.